Welcome, Ben Mama. Some years ago, I made a video for my channel that counted down the greatest systems of all time according to the readers of Retro Gamer magazine. Although the top 30 was published in the magazine itself, they only ever listed the top 50 in a post on the Retro Gamer forum. So in my video, I included that full top 50. I won't tell you the results in case you're interested in watching it, and for those that are, I will pop a link to it in the description. Then a month or so ago, I published a video counting down the top 20 arcade games of all time, as voted for by the retro gaming community at large, which proved very popular. And that's what got me thinking about that older video, so I decided to do my own version of that, except I would be splitting computers and consoles into separate lists to make things a bit more interesting. As before, I put this question to the members of several big retro gaming groups on Facebook, including the hugely popular and very lively Retro Gaming Hysteria, linked to that in the description for those who want to join, as well as my own loyal subscribers, asking them to name their top three and the reasons why they chose those particular consoles. Again, following the same rules as before, I awarded three points to your first choice, two points to the second choice and one point for third. Then I counted up those votes to decide the final placings, and in case of consoles having the same number of points, then I went to the number of votes awarded, followed by the number of first place votes to decide the final ranking. In this particular video, I actually had to use both of these tiebreakers as there were quite a few that finished level on points. To give you some stats on this, over 250 people cast their vote, with over 50 different consoles being voted for which included such oddities as the FM Towns Marty, Casio Loopy and Commodore 64 GS. Even so, there were some consoles that were really notable by their absence, with zero votes being cast for commercially successful systems like the Sega Game Gear, Xbox One and PS Vita. And the latter of those two very much leads on to my next stat, as I very much noticed that most of the more modern systems struggled to gain any votes, with most people staying retro. Now you might say that this was down to the audience I was asking, but this was very much the same demographic as Retro Gaming Magazine used for their list, where modern consoles ranked pretty highly. Before I start the countdown, I should also mention that I'll be producing a second video counting down the consoles that finished from 21 to 40, which will be exclusively available on my Patreon, so there's never a better time to sign up. Now let's get going as I list the top 20 consoles of all time, as voted for by you. Beating the underdog MB Vectrix by just one point to claim the final place in this top 20 is Nintendo's best-selling DS handheld. First released in November 2004, it wasn't replaced until seven years later when its backwards compatible sibling, the 3DS, arrived, going through a huge number of different revisions and variations along the way. Given both the popularity of the console and its long lifespan, it's perhaps a surprise that it didn't rank higher on this list. Nobody left any comments for the DS's inclusion in their votes sadly, but it's interesting to note that every single one of its votes to the cast were as a second place. In 19th place, it's the first console to deliver a truly arcade perfect experience in the form of the SNK Neo Geo. Although not many people actually owned this console back in the day due to its extortionate price, it was the dream machine for many and has been revived in more recent years in the form of both the Neo Geo Gold and a mini arcade machine. The lack of ownership was probably the main reason it didn't finish higher on this list, even if it is still held in high reverence by retro gamers everywhere. One of my subscribers, Neo Lancer, put the reason for his pick pretty succinctly. The Neo Geo, because it put the arcade machine in your home. Just two places above the DS is the Nintendo handheld that started it all in the form of the original Game Boy. I was pretty shocked not to see this one finish higher, especially when you start to see some of the systems that finished above it and sold in far fewer numbers, including one of its biggest rivals. I can't really see a reason for this, and rather weirdly, just like the DS, every single vote awarded to the Game Boy put it in second place. Despite the low ranking, there were a few comments left about the Game Boy, including this one from YouTube subscriber Otto Otto Eisenbrot, 
who rather predictably stated the original Game Boy because Tetris. At number 17 we probably have the first shock on this list, as the much maligned Atari Jaguar makes an appearance. I think this just shows that the real Atari's last proper console isn't nearly as bad as many people like to make out, and this is very much backed up by the hugely vibrant homebrew scene that the 64-bit beast now enjoys. It's also interesting to note at this point that every single Atari console made the top 40. Bradley J. Bell, who is a member of the Atari History Group on Facebook and once wrote games for the Atari 8-bit computer, recent his choice like this, the Atari Jaguar, because it offered great graphics at the time. In 16th position we have the only current gen console to make the top 20 in the form of yet another Nintendo handheld, the Switch. I think everybody expected this one to make it, despite my comments in the intro due to its huge popularity at the current time, legacy as a Nintendo produced system and its focus on retro and retro styled games. With this in mind, it was actually a surprise to me that it didn't finish higher. One of the many YouTube subscribers to join in with the voting, Joybit Legit, picked the Switch as their top choice because it's basically the gaming device I always wanted. In late 2001, Microsoft changed the gaming landscape forever when they decided to make their move into the gaming sector with the original Xbox. Becoming almost the instant replacement to Sega, Microsoft also filled the void left by the arcade legends as the great rival to Sony and their PlayStation. Of course, this fierce rivalry still continues to this day as the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X fight it out for market dominance. YouTube subscriber James Trish put a lot of thought into why he made his choice. Microsoft Xbox, not my first experience with online gaming, but the joy of Halo parties actually saw me purchasing four units and four copies of several games just to be able to set my house up for any time Halo throwdowns. Mech Assault and Rainbow Six Online Play was a blast, and Knights of the Old Republic and Morrowind filled my RPG cravings as well. I had Steel Battalion at 1.2 which was insane fun, but kind of ridiculous at the same time. Plus, Crimson Skies was basically twisted metal in planes. What more could you ask for? In 14th position, we have another cult console that was revived in recent years, and the system that ushered in the 16-bit console era the NEC PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16 for those who preside in North America. Despite failing to gain the worldwide success it deserved, it's built up a very passionate following since it was first released in 1987 and there's no doubt the console plays host to a huge number of all-time classics. YouTube subscriber Neolancer makes his second appearance in this video as he tells us that he chose the PC Engine because it was the most advanced console at its moment. I'm sure you're all thinking that Sega have been rather conspicuous by their absence so far, but the wait for their appearance is over as the rather underrated Saturn is unlucky again as it finishes in 13th place. One of my own personal favourites, the 32-bit boost, truly shines once you explore its incredible Japanese library, that was sadly hidden from the majority of Western gamers back in the day, but can now be explored in full. It's another comment from a subscriber right here, as James Welsh reveals his well-reasoned thoughts. Sega Saturn. People say the Dreamcast was ahead of its time, but the Saturn has so much more personality that it's completely lost to most. I was slightly sad to see my own top pick not make the top 10, but quietly pleased to see the Atari Lynx rank so highly and finish 6 places above its more illustrious rival, the Game Boy. Rather interestingly, the Lynx also did remarkably well in the retro game of Pole 2, showing that despite its relatively modest sales compared to its big rivals, the Lynx is certainly more fondly remembered by gamers across the globe. Whilst I was tempted to add my own comment for this entry, I instead stood aside to let YouTube subscriber Ryan Cease get his name up in lights with this on the mark analysis. The Lynx was a handheld far ahead of its time, and his library of games, while small, was on the whole original and really worth playing. And one Atari console is followed by another as the massively underrated Atari 7800 Pro system blasts into 11th place. 
The world's first fully backwards compatible console, its ability to play Atari 2600 games would see it rank higher in my mind. But the undoubted nostalgia for Atari's original console means more to logic than most. Like other Atari consoles, the 7800 is also another system that's still well supported in the present day. Indeed, great minds think alike, as YouTube subscriber Charlie Ward reasoned his pick. Atari 7800 for the backwards compatibility and homebrew scene. Finishing comfortably in 10th place is one of the best selling consoles of all time and also one of the longest supported too. In fact, just this week, Microsoft announced they were finally dropping Xbox Gold for their 360, which debuted way back in 2005. Many would argue that this now makes it retro, but I think it's a bit too soon to award it that moniker, even if it was 17 years ago that we first got to sample its many delights. One of my YouTube regulars, Peter Pereira, added another valuable contribution to my channel as he noted that the 360 was the video games console that put Xbox into the mainstream and embedded it there forever. Despite its many critics, of which I am one, the Nintendo 64 manages to defy all odds by making the top 10, as it ranks a very credible ninth in the list. Despite having hardware that was less powerful than it should have been, and a controller that makes many people run away, the N64 is backed up by a very strong library of games that includes many titles that are often ranked amongst the greatest of all time, which is no doubt why it got chosen by so many of you. This is backed up by Retro Gaming Hysteria member George Stevens, as he tells us the N64, as I grew up with Mario Kart, Lilac Wars and Goldeneye. I think there will be a lot of people out there surprised by the next entry, especially those of you in North America. For Sega's first big success story in the home market, the Master System secures 8th place, gaining 7 points more than the N64, the second largest gap between two places on this list. The Master System proved very popular amongst those who voted in Western Europe and South America, its two largest markets back in the day. Retro Gaming Hysteria contributor Steve Bridgewood gave this reasoning for his top choice. The Sega Master System, because of the arcade ports, which really sold it to me over the NES. From one Sega console to another, from the first, well, in the West anyway, to the last, as we celebrate the Dreamcast and its admirable 7th place finish. Despite being considered a commercial failure, the Dreamcast holds a cult-like status amongst retro gamers, and Sega fans in particular, who feel the console is very much mistreated by the masses. Its status as Sega's last console no doubt adds to this allure. Patrick Hederson from the Atari History Group expanded on the love for this system. Sega Dreamcast is just an oddball console that could have done so much better, Having the VMU is a lot of fun. As we approach the top 5, things become somewhat more predictable, and I'm sure you've all predicted what's to come. Well, you can mark the PS1 off your bingo card, as Sony's first PlayStation fails to make the final cut. A console that very much changed the whole gaming landscape, it dominated the market, saw Sony eliminate stalwarts like Atari and Sega forever, and almost stood unrivaled. We once again turned to one of my subscribers to give their thoughts, as CD remarked, The PS1. I got in late, but loved this one. Tony Hawk's 3, Tekken 3 and Point Blank. Party nights and binge playing with mates. Good times. And from the original PlayStation to the console that followed it, a backwards compatible PS2. That added even more innovations into the gaming arena, including twin stick controllers as standard, and the ability to play DVDs. Indeed, it was that very feature that saw it installed in more homes than any other console ever. This is actually backed up by a sales report that showed the most sold title at the system's launch was The Matrix on DVD. Ryan Bone, who regularly hangs out in the Atari History Group, put this point of view across. I have a lot of nostalgia for the PS2, but I also just love that generation in general. The PS2 has such a huge library of games with a lot of quality and variety too. The system that very much revived the console market in America after the crash, the Nintendo Entertainment System is undoubtedly one of the most influential of all time too. Following on from the success of the Famicom in Japan, it took North America by storm and introduced us to the likes of Super Mario Bros, Zelda and Mega Man. Many would no doubt argue it deserves to be top, 
but fourth place is certainly no disgrace. Retro Gaming Hysteria's Dean Cork put in his two pennies worth with this post. The Nintendo NES, just because it's iconic, and was an amazing console with an amazing games library. It was running on 1983 hardware and still competed for many years afterwards. And from the NES to the console it replaced at the top of the tree, and the console that created the entire industry almost single-handedly, the Atari 2600 Video Computer System. It's impossible to overstate the influence of Atari's first console. It defined exactly what a home gaming system should be, and gave us the perfect balance between red-hot arcade games like Asteroids and Space Invaders, and thought-provoking originals like Adventure and Pitfall. There were a lot more stories shared for the 2600 than any other console, such as a nostalgia for it, but I picked out this one from my loyal YouTube subscriber, Isaac Kuo. The top one for me is the Atari 2600. It had some really compelling games like Combat, Air Sea Battle, Asteroids and Space War. I even liked the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man more than any of the others. I also feel that the Atari 2600 hardware has aged better than its competitors, like the Intellivision and ColecoVision too. So, I'm sure you've now realised that the great 16-bit console war is set to play out again as we reach the final two and it's the Super Nintendo that loses out this time in second place. Finishing nearly 20 points above the 2600, a high finish was never in doubt, and it was leading the early votes. Known as the Super Famicom in Japan, it very much carried straight on from the market leading NES, delivering new instalments of all the franchises that had cemented its success. Despite its high finish, you shared very few comments about why you picked the SNES, especially compared to the console that beat it but this one from one of my subscribers in James Welch does the job nicely. The SNES, as there has never been a console with the same level of quality per game. And we already know that the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis to those across the pond, has sealed top spot. But you might be interested to learn that despite the SNES taking an early lead, the final result was actually pretty definitive. The Mega Drive finished 5 points above its great rival, mainly thanks to it receiving considerably more votes than any other console below it. Sega's finest moment brought so much joy to gamers, from the speed of Sonic to the sounds of Streets of Rage, and it's hard to argue against its coronation as your greatest console of all time. As you can imagine, I was flooded with loving remarks about the Sega Mega Drive, but I think this one from YouTube subscriber GC Sound Artifacts sums things up pretty well. With the Mega Drive, I got really amazed with the soundtracks of games, such as Shadow of the Beast, El Viento, and Sonic the Hedgehog, which blew my mind. And overall, it's not even better than the second one. And Streets of Rage 2 is definitely my favourite game on the console. I can't think of the Mega Drive without thinking about the music of the great composer, Yuzo Koshiro. And that concludes the 20 greatest consoles of all time, as voted for by you. Now I'm waiting to hear what you think. What consoles do you think should have ranked higher? Which finishes were you most surprised by? And are there any that you were shocked not to see make the final cut? As always, I'd love to read your thoughts and views in the comments, so please get typing. Before I go though, I must thank all of my little patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give a special thanks to the following patrons and YouTube backers in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Brady Games, D Vaughan, Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olson, Dos Gamer Man, Sonic Mania 999, Paul Daniel, James Taylor, Retro Resolution, Troy Dube, Paul Metcalf, Matt Standish, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to host rich content, including downloads, creative insights, and exclusive videos including the follow-up one to this one, showing you the consoles that were ranked from 21 to 40. Surely that's reason enough. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.